For decades, Costa Rica has invited tourists to enjoy its natural beauty and use their dollars to conserve it. One of the deepest roots of this ecotourism traces back to a group of American Quakers. They arrived in the 1950s and carved out a community they called Monteverde, or Green Mountain, a town and cloud forest reserve that form one of the best known tourist spots in this Central American nation. Today, the influence of Quakers can be seen in local produce and food that's on the grocery store shelves, in the recreation at the Friends School and Center, which is a social hub for the larger community of Costa Ricans and settlers. Over time, the number of original Quaker pioneers has dwindled to a relative handful. At Sunday services, there is no priest or leader, no sermon, no music, as is typical for many Quaker congregations. It's called a meeting and mostly conducted in silence. Well, the basic tenet, I think, of Quaker faith is the belief, the strong belief, there is that of God in every person. That if you sit in silence and listen, that you can be led, be led by the Spirit. Lucille, or Lucky Gwyndon, was among the earliest arrivals here, led on an extraordinary journey by another basic tenet of Quaker faith, which goes back to 17th century England. That's pacifism. All men between 18 and 25 will be required to register. I repeat. Back in 1948, the U.S. reinstituted the draft requiring all young men to sign up. Lucky Gwyndon's husband to be, Wolf, resisted. When we visited, Wolf Gwyndon was in poor health and unable to speak. He died just four weeks later. Another resistor from Alabama, Marvin Rockwell, now 93, said they were willing to face the consequences. We were arrested and sentenced to a year and a day in prison. We were actually in prison for a third of the sentence, out on parole of balance. Far more influential than prison was a piece of advice given to them at sentencing by the judge in that Alabama court. He said, if you can't obey the laws of this country, then you should look for another one. So that, that planted a seed. Rockwell, Gwyndon, and two other resistors, joined by other families from Fairhope, Alabama, 44 people in all, decided to find a new country, unable to reconcile their beliefs with a system that they believed was preparing the United States for the next war. Costa Rica was a natural fit. It was encouraging immigration and in 1949 abolished its army. It was also a country with mostly middle class, not, not the extreme rich and the extreme poor. And they were also welcoming people to come in and help develop it. So when my husband, then not my husband, my husband-to-be wrote to me, how would I like to live in Costa Rica? <laughs> Of course. You'd grown up in Iowa. <laughs> I grew up in Iowa. The Costa Rica they chose to live in could not be more different than Iowa or Alabama. With proceeds from the sale of land back home, they purchased some 3,400 acres in a lush tropical mountainscape. The road here, treacherous even today, well, they had to build it. The road when we first came, well, like I said, was an ox cart trail. You had to have four-wheel drive, chains, maybe carry an extra axle with you, and have a winch. And yeah. even then, sometimes the oxen had to, people had to get pulled out by oxen. But. There was no clinic. The community counted on faith and, ironically, the military experience of Marvin Rockwell. In the Second World War, I was drafted and uh, wouldn't carry a rifle, so they put me in the medical corps, which... Uh, was the training I got was very valuable here because uh, when we first got here, the closest doctor was Punta Arenas, six hours away by Jeep. In time, a school and community center were built, land was cleared and farms established. The Gwindons went on to have nine children. Their dairy farm is now operated by son Benito Gwindon. Together, international conservation groups in the Quaker community, led by Wolf Gwyndon, agreed to protect the forest from mining, logging, or even further human encroachment. Wolf spent the first 20 years of his life 
cutting down trees and the rest of his life saving trees. So. <laughs> the Quakers themselves contributed a third of the acres they'd purchased earlier toward the Cloud Forest Reserve. Today, some 250,000 eco-tourists visit here each year. A smaller number of North Americans have come and stayed. Hawaii native Nicolette Smith settled here with her husband, Randall. It didn't take us long at all to realize this is the perfect place to have kids. I mean, they're growing up a lot like I did in Hilo, a small town, you know, where everybody knows who you are. For the Smiths, the Friends School and Center quickly became a social hub to meet others, a place for cultural events as well as religious observances. Many of those who attend Sunday services are not Quaker. We're not out to convert anybody. There are branches of Quakerism where that's, that's, their, that's what they do, but we not, not our branch. And uh, so to live peaceably, to work with and cooperatively. While Quakers draw on biblical scriptures, their belief system is inherently ecumenical, founded amid religious turmoil in 17th century England. Quakerism's founders believed in direct communion with God, although some branches do have programmed services with Bible readings. After months of attending for mostly social reasons, the Smiths decided to do so for spiritual ones and become Quakers. I'm looking for a place to practice empathy. I'm looking for a place to practice tolerance. I'm looking for a, a, a place to practice compassion, love, truth. Um, what I found in, in the Friends community is a place to do that that is safe, that is a very large tent. Now, the great part of that was that I ended up joining the most unorganized, organized religion I could find. One whose adherents, numbering just a few dozen, have left a large civic footprint in Costa Rica, long known as one of the most peaceful nations in this hemisphere. For Religion and Ethics News Weekly, this is Fred DeSamuel Azuro in Monteverde, Costa Rica.